In the year 605 BC, the Babylonian Empire, led by King Nebuchadnezzar, invaded and conquered Jerusalem. Many of the Israelites, including Daniel, are taken captive and brought to Babylon. The story of Daniel in the Bible begins when he is a young man living in Jerusalem. Once in Babylon, Daniel and the other captives are trained in the language and customs of the Babylonians. They are also offered the king's delicacies to eat and drink. However, Daniel, along with three of his friends, Hananiah, Miss Hale, and Azariah, refuse to eat the king's food and instead request to eat vegetables and drink water. They believe that by doing so, they will remain faithful to their God and not defile themselves. God blesses their choice and they appear healthier and stronger than the others who ate the king's food. Daniel soon gains favor with the chief official in charge of the captives and is given the opportunity to serve in the king's palace. He excels in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, so much so that the king finds him to be ten times better than all his wise men and magicians. One night, King Nebuchadnezzar has a dream that greatly troubles him. He calls all his wise men and magicians to interpret the dream for him, but none of them are able to. In his frustration, the king orders that all the wise men and magicians in Babylon be killed, including Daniel and his friends. Upon hearing this news, Daniel asks for some time so that he may seek God's wisdom and understanding. God reveals the dream and its interpretation to Daniel in a vision. Daniel goes before the king and tells him about his dream, which was of a large statue made of different materials. Daniel explains that the statue represents the succession of kingdoms in the world, with the head of gold representing Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom, followed by kingdoms of silver, bronze, iron, and a mixture of iron and clay. Daniel then interprets the dream, explaining that the dream symbolizes the rise and fall of world empires and that God is ultimately in control of history. Nebuchadnezzar is greatly impressed with Daniel's interpretation and recognizes the power of God. Over time, Daniel gains even more favor with Nebuchadnezzar and serves as an advisor to him. He interprets more dreams and visions, including one where the king is warned about his pride and arrogance. Despite Daniel's warnings, Nebuchadnezzar does not humble himself, and as a result, he is driven away from people and lives like a wild animal in the field. However, after a period of time, the king regains his sanity and acknowledges the power and sovereignty of God. After Nebuchadnezzar's death, his son Belshazzar becomes the ruler of Babylon. One night, Belshazzar holds a great feast and uses the golden vessels taken from the temple in Jerusalem to drink wine and praise his gods. Suddenly, a mysterious hand appears and writes on the wall. None of the wise men and astrologers can interpret the writing, so the queen advises the king to call upon Daniel to interpret it. Daniel arrives and tells Belshazzar that the writing means that his time as king is over and the kingdom will be given to the Medes and Persians. That very night, Babylon is invaded and conquered by the Medo-Persian Empire, just as Daniel had predicted. After the fall of Babylon, Daniel continues to serve in the court of the new king, Darius the Mede. However, Daniel's excellence and integrity make the other officials jealous, and they plot to have him killed. They convince Darius. To pass a law stating that anyone who prays to any other god or man besides the king for thirty days shall be thrown into a den of lions. Aware of the new law, Daniel continues to pray to God three times a day, just as he always has. When the officials catch him, they bring him before the king, who is regretful but bound by the law to have Daniel thrown into the lion's den. However, God protects Daniel in the den, and the next morning, Darius rushes to the den and finds Daniel unharmed. Overjoyed, Darius declares that the God of Daniel is the living God, and he orders those who conspired against Daniel to be thrown into the lion's den instead, where they are instantly devoured. Throughout his life, Daniel's faith and character continue to shine, and he gains favor with future kings. He has many visions and dreams, some of which reveal prophecies about the future, 
including the rise and fall of empires and the coming of a future Messiah. Daniel's story in the Bible demonstrates his unwavering faith in God, his integrity, his wisdom, and his courage. He serves as a reminder that no matter the circumstances, God is ultimately in control and will protect. The story of Esther in the Bible is found in the Book of Esther. It tells the tale of a Jewish woman named Esther who becomes queen of the Persian Empire and uses her position to save the Jewish people from a plot to annihilate them. The story begins when King Ahasuerus, also known as King Xerxes, holds a grand banquet where he displays his wealth and power. During the festivities, he commands his wife, Queen Vashti, to appear before the guests, but she refuses. The king, angered by her disobedience, decides to strip her of her title and find a new queen. A search for a new queen begins throughout the empire, and Esther, a young and beautiful Jewish woman living in Persia under the care of her cousin Mordecai, is chosen as one of the candidates. Esther is taken to the palace and undergoes a year of beauty treatments before being presented to the king. He is captivated by her beauty and chooses her as his new queen, without knowing she is Jewish. Meanwhile, Mordecai, who works at the king's gate, overhears a plot to assassinate the king. He informs Esther, who reports it to the king in Mordecai's name. The plot is investigated, and the conspirators are executed. However, the king fails to properly reward Mordecai for his loyalty. A new character is introduced to the story, Haman, an influential and prideful official in the king's court. Haman harbors a deep hatred for the Jews, especially Mordecai, who refuses to bow down to him. Seeking revenge, Haman convinces the king to issue a decree to annihilate all the Jews in the kingdom on a specific day. Mordecai learns about Haman's plan and urges Esther, who has kept her Jewish identity a secret, to go before the king and plead for the salvation of her people. However, approaching the king without being summoned is punishable by death, and Esther is hesitant. Mordecai responds with a now famous line, saying, Who knows? Perhaps you have come to royal dignity for such a time as this. Esther bravely accepts the challenge and devises a plan. She invites the king and Haman to a banquet and, on the first night, asks them to return the next day for another banquet. Meanwhile, Haman, upon passing by Mordecai, who still refuses to bow to him, builds a gallows to hang Mordecai. That night, the king can't sleep and orders the chronicles of his reign to be read to him. In the records, he is reminded of the time when Mordecai had saved his life by revealing the assassination plot. Intrigued, the king asks what honor had been bestowed upon Mordecai for his loyalty and is shocked to find out that nothing had been done for him. The next day, Haman comes to the second banquet expecting to enjoy the favor of the king. However, before he can make his request, the king asks him how a person should be honored. Assuming the king is referring to him, Haman outlines an elaborate ceremony. But to his horror, the king orders Haman to carry out this very ceremony for Mordecai, to honor him for saving the king's life. Haman is humiliated as he complies with the king's command. Later, at the banquet, Esther reveals her true identity as a Jew and pleads with the king to save her people from Haman's plot. In a fit of rage, the king orders Haman to be hanged on the very gallows he had prepared for Mordecai. In a final act of justice, the king allows Esther and Mordecai to draft a new decree that allows the Jews to defend themselves against their enemies. On the appointed day, the Jews are able to successfully defend themselves and emerge victorious. The story of Esther concludes with the establishment of the Festival of Purim, which is celebrated to this day as a remembrance of the deliverance of the Jewish people. It serves as a reminder of God's faithfulness and the bravery and courage of Esther and Mordecai in saving their people from destruction. Hello kids! Parents and Kids TV is here again to tell us a Bible story. In a time long ago, when the world was filled with wonder, one man stood out among the masses, a beacon of faith and purity. This is the short story of John the Baptist, a figure deeply cherished in biblical history. 
John was born into humble beginnings, yet his destiny was anything but ordinary. From an early age, it was clear that he was destined for greatness. He possessed an unwavering faith, a heart filled with compassion, and a remarkable ability to touch the lives of everyone he encountered. As John matured, his faith and dedication to his beliefs only deepened. People from all corners sought his wisdom and guidance, drawn to his magnetic presence and the principles he embodied. It was during this time that John became known as the baptizer, for he would baptize those seeking a fresh start, a rebirth. John's baptism symbolized a cleansing of the soul, a preparation for the coming of a greater power. His devotees spread his teachings like wildfire, igniting a spiritual movement that reverberated across lands. This powerful encounter solidified John's belief in his purpose, to pave the way for Jesus and prepare the hearts of humanity to receive him. His unwavering dedication never wavered, even in the face of adversity. John fearlessly spoke out against corruption, challenging even the mightiest of rulers, for he knew that the truth must always prevail. While his message angered some, many recognized the importance of his insights and sought redemption through his spiritual teachings. The world lost a guiding light when John was unjustly imprisoned and eventually beheaded, a martyr for the righteous path he had walked so faithfully. But his legacy persisted, echoing in the hearts of millions throughout the ages. John's story may be short, but it's an undeniable testament to the power of faith, compassion, and the ability of one person to leave an indelible impact on the world. His unwavering devotion still inspires countless souls to this day. So, let us remember John the Baptist, a man who devoted his life to guiding others towards Jesus Christ. May his story continue to inspire us to seek truth, embrace faith, and walk boldly on the path of righteousness. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the incredible story of John the Baptist. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to stay updated on more captivating stories from biblical history.